I want to go back to authority too, because I think that will help people figure out how to navigate those moments of when they hit that fork in the road and they have to make the decision. Like, am I going to listen to this ping, this idea, this intuition, even though it's scary, even though I'd be stepping through fear or doing something new or different, I have to take that bold choice and follow my gut on this. And how do people make those decisions? So if you could run through just a general overview of the different authority types and when they download the app or go to myhumandesign.com, where can they find their authority? So your authority is usually the, will be the second category that you'll see when you run your human design. And it really is, even though I was telling you before that human design goes so deep, it goes into dreams, it goes into animals, it goes into the origin of space, it goes into crystals of consciousness and reincarnation, there's all these things. The most important factor in all of human design is your strategy, which is how you use your energy type, and your authority, which is how you make decisions, how you know which is the right way to go in any, any, in any point. Mm -hmm. And so basically, your authority, like I was saying, is not in your mind. The mind is not meant to be in charge of anyone's life decisions because the mind is too conditioned and the mind is actually supposed to be used to look at the outside world, to learn things, to get genius mm -hmm. at things, to create stuff, to come up with solutions. So the mind is supposed to be our authority in the outside world. We have an inner authority, which is in our body, which is where the mystical force, mm -hmm. the universe, whatever you want to call it, speaks to us. That's where we convene with the universe inside of us or God inside of us. That's that point that is ineffable where we just feel. Mm -hmm. And so you have many different kinds of authority. The most common in the world is emotional authority because 51% of the world is emotional. And it's very difficult for emotional people to live in this world because we live in a world which says, answer the email straight away, knowing the answer straight away is like being in charge of your life, is knowing what you want, is professional, whatever. Emotional people, like me, we are people who, and one of my teachers said that the difference between being emotional and non-emotional is bigger than the difference between men and women. <laughs> so <laughs> emotional people are people who wake up one morning and we could feel like we're wearing rose colored glasses on and everything seems sweet and bright and amazing. And then another day you're in the blues and mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with what's going on in the world around you. Having said that, there's so many layers to being emotional, but in terms of decision making, what it means is that if you're in a good mood, if I'm in a good mood and Jessica, you say to me, do you want to go on this trip? I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, yes, I'm in, count me in. Mm -hmm. When that emotional wave has, has subsided and I'm back at neutral, I'm going to be like, oh my God, why did I say yes to that trip? I'm actually <laughs> not that into it. Like, how do I feel about it? So what it really depends on with emotional authority is you wait until you're at a time where you're neutral. Mm -hmm. And then when you're neutral, you revisit the situation and you see how it makes you feel. What is so beautiful about emotional authority right now is that it is making sure that it's not about more shots, it's about more shots on target mm -hmm. that get you further. That applies to everybody, but that's really a lesson of emotional authority is like, just wait, it's the divine timing. You will be clear when you need to be clear. That's the time the person needs to re receive that email. Or that's the time the person is gonna re respond to you best or whatever. I coach my fiance on this all the time because he's emotional. Now I'm not emotional, of course, we've paired up. But when he gets like that lightning strike of like a great, he's like, oh, I know how we should like structure this deal now. I'm going to go email them. And I'm like, wait, wait for the wave to subside. <laughs> if you still feel good about the deal, then send it. I always give him like that moment of check and pause because I can see when he's so excited or if he's like down in the dumps, he's like, I'm going to, you know, more reactive. And I'm like, no, 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 just wait. And then usually what he responds to is somewhere in between. I love that. And that's the neutral, right? So mm -hmm. it's beautiful. In a nutshell, with your emotional authority, it genuinely is about how you feel when you think about it. Does it give you sweet emotion? And you need to be already starting at a cool, calm place to feel the difference of, oh, it's, it's making me feel something nice when I think about it. And that's really difficult to do because again, our mind is based on logic. It's like, you can't just do it based on how you feel. There's all this conditioning, especially around women. Oh, you're so emotional, whatever. This is not something you just get down pat and then you're, you don't, you're done with it. It's like the more you do it, the more you need to do it. And the, the better the rewards get and the more magical and mystical life becomes, truly. The hardest step is when you are going from zero to one, when you don't believe it and then you see that it works. But then from one to two is, is only half that size, right? And then it gets more and more. So then you have sacral, which is you. And that's what, literally you said it so perfectly where you're like, I'm so drawn to this thing that I can't not 
think about it, talk about it, do it. And in a smaller way, it really is about having a visceral excitement to something. So whether it's a coffee or whether it's a job or whether it's a partner, it applies to everything. So the manual never changes. It's just that always that direction. It's like that no fail guidance system you can rely on to give you the thing that you need to get. And so for them, it's really difficult because it's, you can't just do some only the things that make you happy. You can't only just do the things that excite you. But actually, when you realize that the universe makes you excited about that thing, because that's the thing it wants you to do. So you actually just have to listen and shush and not really be in charge of why you choose to say have, you know, gardening excites you and it's someone else's idea of hell. So that's really the way with the sacral is if something doesn't give me that visceral, like I sit up a little bit further in my chair or it makes my eyes perk up or whatever, you know, it's that with generators. And again, it's over the mind like, oh, you have, but surely you have to do certain things that you don't like, or certainly you have some duties that you don't enjoy. What I say to those people is, listen, if there's certain parts of the process that you don't love, ultimately it's getting you something that really is exciting to you. Of course, that's part of the learning. That's the devotion. That's the discipline. That's the sort of transformation period that we all go through in order to become a diamond. You have to spend the time in the refinement. But if it's should, if it's heavy, if it's, you know, I'm getting ego validation from telling myself I'm so good because I sacrifice myself then that's when it's wrong. And you'll know immediately because as a generator or a manifesting generator, if you have sacral authority, even if you're an emotional manifesting generator or generator, you will feel depleted, you will frust feel frustrated, and you will feel like so non-excited about life. You will just feel not the least juicy thing on the planet. And there's so many generators walking around and MGs walking around on the planet feeling like that because of that conditioning. Then we have splenic authority, and splenic authority is very much ping on ping on ping on ping. Go here, do this, do that. And it's one time, speaks to you that one time and it never comes back again. So it's gonna be like, go buy the almond milk. And then you'll be like, hold on, what was my intuition telling me? And it's like, I don't need to say it twice. Like you heard me, you either do what I said or whatever. And I feel that's the way with a lot of people where they're like, there's that meme of like, I asked for a sign and then I asked for a signy a sign. <laughs> it's like splenic authority is only just gonna be like, tell you once and really people with splenic authority need to learn to firstly if they can't trust the voice and maybe this is a thing for ping the way you talk about pings anyways if you can't even act on it at least honor that it showed up okay I heard you I'm too scared to do something about you now but I'm not going to pretend you didn't ever came I'll either write you down or I'll you know make a mental note or say thank you for coming I'm not ready yet, but come back, visit me later. Whatever you need to do to just be in, in honoring or engagement of that universal conversation that's trying to come to you. And then you have ego authority. Those are really people who actually have to just go after the things they really want, like physical things they really want. Money, fame, impact, they'll all have different ones, but it's like you are driven to be driven by a shiny carrot and it's actually healthy for you karmically to accept that your wants are so, like you have to just be that kind of like entitled, a little, little bit more entitled than you've been learned to taught to be but with them it's always about what is it that drives you because you're not maybe you have conditioning over what you're supposed to go after and actually really learning for you maybe your soul is here to make money so you have to clear that shadow and say it's okay for me to be driven by this this is part of my authentic code for example where I don't have the negative feelings around that or whatever and also, it doesn't make me better than other people. A lot of people with ego have that, where it's like, oh, do I think people are going to look at me and think, who does she think she is, or any of that stuff. So that's a lot of work around the ego authority. Then you have sounding board authority. Those are people who, they basically almost need to say things out loud to another person, not to get advice, but to just hear the tone of how they feel around someone. So let's say, for example, you get your dream house and your, and your G-Center authority. If you were G Center Authority, you'd be talking to me about it. I could, on paper, hear you say, I love it, it's great, blah, blah, blah. But I'd be like, well, you're saying it in that tone, though. You don't sound that happy about it. Whereas if you're like, I love it, oh my gosh, it's great. That would be so different than, yeah, it's great, it ticks all the boxes, da, da, da. Yeah, I love it, yeah. That's really the thing with the G Center is they need to talk things out. They need to have that sounding board, not to hear what the other person is saying, but to almost hear the how they feel about it when it comes out of their mouth, rather than how they think it sounds in their own head. And then you have mental authority. And this is one of the trickiest ones because it is mind, but it's not conditioned mind. It's this sort of third eye clarity 
of there are certain things that just make sense to you and you don't know why they make sense to you or you're just like, oh, it seems like it's that. But then what happens with people with mental authority, that clarity will drop in straight away. Like the obvious choice will be clear and then they will talk themselves out of the obvious choice because they are so mental. So they will over either logicize or fantasize or any of those faculties that live in the mind, like the substantiating of facts or the thinking of a million different options of all of that kind of thing will get in the way. So they almost need to always come back to what's the one that makes sense without me backing it up as to why it makes sense and trusting that there's a reason why that makes sense to you because it was literally just dropped into your brain. And that's really only 2% of the population that have mental authority. You know, we have haven't seen that enough. And then the last one is lunar authority, which is the authority for all reflectors. And all reflectors, they're what we call the not self in human design, which is the exact opposite of how you're supposed to be. Their not self is being very spontaneous and taking action on a whim. Whereas with them, the universe, your authority is lunar. So it's coming outside of you and it's taking place over the course of a lunar of the moon, right? So if something is right for a reflector because they have so many conditionings that are coming to them every time they're around people, I could spend time with you if I was a reflector and be like, I want to be a podcast host and feel so emphatic about it. And then I go back to my house and I'm like, oh, I don't really care about it that much. So the voice that's going to keep revisiting you over time and is not going to leave and not going to budge is that slow kind of outside whisper that you've been getting that nudge a couple times now to know that it's really you and not something you picked up from just being in someone else's energy. That's when you listen. And again, that's a very difficult one to take because you have to wait. I think this is so helpful on so many different levels. The first thing I thought of was responding to tests or triggers, especially the emotional authority. But like, how do you respond to those tests or triggers? How do you cement them in your mind of the, the story making behind them and what they mean to you and all of that? Like maybe give it a second, depending upon what authority you are, to just sit in. Sometimes you're triggered because you just picked up someone else's emotional feeling and you just need to squeeze your fist and get that anger out. And you don't actually have to go back to your childhood memory of anger or any of that. That's not the story. You just let the feeling move over you th somatically. And the other place is pings obviously and how they come through and how they connect to you and it's so funny with sacral because it's yes no and I feel that I would say 99% of the time but for some reason when it comes to pleasure seeking like booking a vacation or whatever I feel like I go into the mental even though that's not my authority but I'll be like I'll know where I want to go or how I want to feel. And then the mind comes in. It's like, well, this could be better. Is that the best option you could actually get? Or what if it's like this? Maybe you should look up, you know, a better deal on this website or all the conditioning starts coming in. And recently what's been helping me a lot is just visualizing the sensation in the space without whatever the name of the place is. Just, okay, how do you want to feel? And try to put everything else out. And then when I do that, it's like, oh, I'm, I can physically see myself in the place I'm supposed to go. And I love that you said that because I think what's important is understanding with human design, there are areas where we are porous and open to picking up mm -hmm. other people's stuff and places where we're not. Mm -hmm. So when you understand the stuff that is inherently yours to deal with that you have to karmically deal with, let's say, for example, if someone has inherently in their chart a fear of becoming their highest, most powerful self, then okay, if something on the outside triggers it, then you still have to deal with it. You know what I mean? It's still <laughs> yours. If you're an emotional and you're in a bad mood and someone pisses you off, like you said, you can know what's yours and what's not yours, what you're picking up on and what you actually need to use as an opportunity to overcome because every gift and every trait in human design has a positive expression of itself and a negative expression of itself. So mm -hmm. for example, the people who have the fear of becoming their highest, most powerful self are here to embody their highest, most powerful self as part of what they actually need to do here. That's part of what their assignment mm -hmm. was. And so a fear will often point you to the opposite of it as something that you need to become. I love that. Even thinking about, we just did our challenge where people were taking like the biggest block that was coming up for them, like again, hitting them over the head again and again. And even just reframing that to like that block is actually what you're supposed to master in this lifetime. You really becoming mm -hmm. almost the opposite of that block is what you're destined to do, especially if it's a block that's hit you so many times. 
Think of how much more excited you would be to step through that fear, to take that aligned action that's according to that opposite of that block. You'd be like, the universe is asking me to do this. This isn't even just about me. Like me doing this is helping the community, is helping evolution, is helping humanity. Like I need to step through this. So know that when you're going through these hard things or these heavy blocks and all this stuff, you aren't alone. There is this whole support system behind you, like guiding you towards it. Yeah. And it's so nice to remember that you can handle it because you are given it. And Mm -hmm. I think what's really important is to not look at the fact that we get given challenges as evidence of our weakness and our helplessness. Everyone has their little divine assignments Mm -hmm. and yours just has a different flavor than everyone else's. We somehow think ours are worse or we got lumped with the wrong one or the whatever we missed that we got missed the memo. But it's exactly what you're saying is like pointing you to the exact thing that you need to become. Honestly, that's why I think TBM is so powerful because it helps you so practically get rid of those things or chip away at the stuff that has just gone over and over and over again we don't have time for this anymore 2027 Mm -hmm. is only four years away like three years away that's really not a lot of time and and we want to make sure that we are on the front foot 